Alright guys, he's in here, welcome back to the channel for another dislike video. And in this video we're going to be looking at the big question which is, is dislike a free to play friendly game? Okay. Now, there's a short answer to that and there's a long answer to that and the short answer is ultimately yes, it's free to play friendly. However, the answer is far more nuanced than just simply yes because what people look for in gacha titles greatly differs from person to person. Some people would consider if a game is free to play friendly, you can beat all the content in it without spending any money. That would mean it is free to play friendly. And yes, this game 100% is. Another person who wants to know if a game's free to play friendly are basically asking, can you beat the content? Are the characters easily accessible? And do you get a lot of free to play currency that will enable you to get a lot of the characters that you might want in game? And I feel like the answer to that one is probably no. Um, and the real reason for that is because of how you really have to use your currency in this game, as well as the rates in this game. Now, once I finish this wave runner, I'm going to go out to have a look at a couple of things. Um, but what I would say is, from a character point of view, from playing the game, you 100% can complete this game free to play, okay? Um, I know some people don't like this game being mentioned too much, but it's a little bit like Genshin Impact to the extent of you don't actually need these more high level characters to complete the game however if you want to compete at a higher level in the likes of pvp and um, ranking on like scoreboards and stuff like that you may want to have more high-end characters things like tower mode etc is probably going to be a little bit less accessible if you are a free to play player and um, because quite simply it's tough and you're going to need some of the things that these better characters do um, to be able to beat them, you know? Um, now, the issue we've got just now is we've only got one banner in the game. And in that banner, it's, I want to just call it a starter banner. I don't really know what else to call it. There's no featured units on it. Every character's in the banner that's available in game. It's got a, an absolutely horrendous pull rate. The pull rate on it is pretty damn shocking. Um, but you do get a lot of currency. Now, we're just going to leave here just now. Um, but yeah, so if you look here, you'll see it's, it's got this banner. Um, this banner is kind of the general pool banner. Every, everyone's in here. You can see your rates are here. It's a 1% rate for legendary, which is pretty low. Um, I want to say it is pretty low. I mean, generally a 2% rate is preferred by a lot of people. Doesn't sound like a big deal going from 1% to 2%, but it actually can make a big difference with regards to your summons. Um, obviously the rest of the pool there, you can see it, epic 9%, rare 90%. Um, I'd say that's a little bit low, to be honest. But again, I think that's balanced out by the fact that this game doesn't require you to basically have a, a team full of top tier characters to actually complete the content. In fact, you could argue that some of the the lesser starred characters are um, more desirable. Like if we go to friends here, if we go to friend assist, this character here, and um, the one I'm tapping on, she's probably one of the most dem in demand characters in the game. Um, she's absolutely fantastic. She's probably one of the best DPS characters you can get. And she's a four star. But what I will say is, People love to mention how this character's a four star and she's better than a lot of five star characters, but she's pretty damn hard to pull. Um, I'll just explain why. I mean, if you go to here and you look at the rates again, <clears throat> you've got a 9% chance to pull a four star, okay? Now, when that happens, 31% of the time it's going to be one of these three traits and 7% of the time it's going to be a shimmer and that character just so happens to be a shimmer. So basically you've got a double roll, you've got a 9% chance of getting a 4 star and then 7% of the time when you get a 4 star it's going to be a shimmer character and there is a couple, I mean I've had a couple of 4 star pulls, two I've had so far that are shimmer characters and unfortunately for me, each time I've pulled the same damn unit and um, I've not been able to pull that unit yet, which is fairly disappointing. Um, but these characters are good, they can compete, they can do really well. I mean, you've got, for example, Yushuna, who's a great support character. She's, where is she? 
She's a great support character, she's totally free to play. Um, you don't even need to summon on a banner to get this one, you get her from Ripples. You've got other characters that are really good, like Chang Pu, who's a great healer. You've got Drew, who you start off with, who's a very, very solid DPS character. Some people absolutely adore Drew. I've seen people feeding um, five-star characters in to raise up the level of Drew. Um, you've got really good, where are we? Um, try to find some other units here. You've got Ankichai, who's a really good um, buffing unit, like you see here. Gives attack up to the team, 40%. Characters like that, you know, you've got free to play healers, free to play buffers, free to play support characters, free to play controllers. All of these characters are going to help you beat the content. Um, so to me, I would say that it's free to play friendly. However, I know from experience that a lot of free to play players feel like they're not getting the full experience if they are not able to summon the characters that they want. Now, while the game does give you a decent amount of crystals, um, it does, I mean honestly playing the game it does give you a decent amount of crystals, you're probably not really advised to use those crystals for summoning, which really goes against the grain of anything that you'll know. Right? Anybody who plays gacha games knows that as a free-to-play player, you hold on to your currency. You hold on to your currency until a good banner comes along, and then that is when you spend your currency, and you can get yourself some good units. Maybe there'll be multiple units or, or that are on a rate up, maybe there'll be a guarantee after like five pulls, whatever. That tends to be what free-to-play players save their currency for. However, in this game, it is advisable that if you want to grow at any kind of pace, you want to basically use your free-to-play currency to buy stamina. Now, obviously, I've got a lot of stamina packs, so I'm not going to be using my currency for that for a while. Um, but <clears throat> this is essentially where you want to put your currency. You want to put it into here, and it's going to cost you, I think the first one is 60, but I think after that it's like 100. I can't I can't remember, to be honest. Um, I think the first one's 60, and the rest of them are 100. So you want to basically put your stamina into that, your crystals into that, and it means it's going to cost you, what, 960 crystals a day if you want to try and grind out as much as possible now there is a lot of ways for you to gain crystals but if you're using those crystals just to play i'm going to say that in that regard it's probably not very free to play friendly however however just to note you do get a lot of these gold records okay you do get a lot of these gold records and these gold records do allow you to summon the only thing I'll say is, the game has just started, okay? Now, from doing missions and stuff like that, you will get a lot of gold records. I mean, fair enough, I'm a bit of a whale. Um, I've got pretty much all the gold records that you can get from missions and stuff like that, so really, for me now, my gold record supplies have virtually ran dry. Um, and I think when people say to people, oh, it's, it's really free to play friendly, you can summon all the characters, they give you loads of gold records, um, they do at the start, but we don't know long term how that's going to play out. So what I would say is, if and this is very difficult, okay, but if you can, I would try and hold on to as much as these as possible because we are going to start having character focused banners, okay, and on those character focused banners, depending on how it works, it might work where you just have a single five star that's on rate up, or it might work something along the lines of Dokkan Battle or um, Grand Cross. I think it might work like Grand Cross, where a batch of characters will have rate up on them. So the new character would have the highest rate, but there'd be a few other feature characters that would have a boosted rate as well. Um, I feel like that is the route they might go down. So it may well be that all of the summons that we've all done on these opening banners have actually just been a complete waste of time because we'll get a banner that will give us a better chance of um, getting more units later. So I would say that if you are someone who has no intention whatsoever of spending on this game, save these. Just, just save them. Um, get by with what you can. Um, farm ripples, get Yushuna, get characters like Dahlia. Um, just use them as a short-term fix so that you don't have to use these currencies. Because from starting the game, you will have by now at least had your guaranteed four star. Now, a five star. Now, I would say that use 10. Okay, use 10. Get your guaranteed five star. Um, try and do as much of the game as possible with that and save on, save up these as long as you can because it may well be there's going to be a better time to use them and with events and stuff like that coming 
again, we don't know how often these are going to refresh. So I went off on a bit of a tangent there. Currency-wise, I, I don't think it's that free-to-play friendly. Um, yes, starting out, they're going to give you quite a lot, but it's diminishing returns on that. I mean, that is literally just because every game's that way. When you complete all of the opening content, you're going to be absolutely swimming in things like crystals and things like gold records or whatever the currency is for said game. Um, but after that, I suppose you call it after the honeymoon period, things is more about how they can continue to beef up the economy by giving you more events to play, um, limited time story events, limited time like raid events and stuff like that. That's how we're going to see long term how free to play friendly it is for summoning new units. However, simply to play and enjoy the game, I would say that it is definitely free to play friendly, hence the reason why I said at the start, yes, but the answer's a little bit more nuanced. So overall, to play the game, I think it is free to play friendly. To summon and get new units, I don't really think it's that free to play friendly, to be honest. But if you are not someone who is obsessed with getting the new shiny character every single time they drop, then you will have an absolute blast playing this game without spending any money. Um, if you are someone who's addicted to getting the newest characters, then prepare to crack out your credit card because it's going to cost you a bit of money. But anyway guys, I've been Hayes Inc. Um, just giving you my honest thoughts about if I think this game is free to play friendly or not. And let me know what you think in the comments down below and I'll catch you on the next video guys. Peace out and I'll see you later. Goodbye.